Bitcoin is at extreme levels. And I'm not talking about the price. The price is everything but extreme. We are not close to the all time high. We are not close to a bottom. We are just hovering along. But there is something extreme about this market because we are at extreme boredom for Bitcoin. Bitcoin hasn't been that boring for quite a while and you can quantify this in volatility. So you can measure the standard deviation of the price movements of Bitcoin. The volatility as in how much is it going up and down over time. And you can even become a bit more fancy than that. You can look at derivative instruments. So at options, for example, you can find out how much do those options imply what the market expects volatility will be in the future. Because an option is a bet on where the price will be in the future and the more volatile it is, the more you can pay for the option if the option is currently out of the money. But that topic expands the scope of this video. Let's simply look at Bitcoin's long term volatility and how the price reacted historically to low volatility. What we see over here is a chart of Bitcoin's implied 30 day volatility. And look at this. We are at historical lows here. The market never expected Bitcoin to be as calm as now. The market thinks nothing will happen in the next 30 days. Now we can also look at the seven day implied volatility and see how there is somewhat of a floor. And when we hit that floor here, the horizontal line, we tend to shoot up afterwards again. And we are getting very close to this line again. Now what happens when we shoot up here? What happens during those points in time? Let's look at the Bitcoin price here below. This is a chart that starts in 2017. Let's zoom in on November of 2018. So over here, Bitcoin's price was pretty stable at around 6,400 for quite a while. And so the implied volatility went down. But then a crash happened, a very quick crash, a crash of 50% roughly. And so the implied volatility went up. So in this case, a very low implied volatility predicted a breakout to the downside. Now let's move on. What happened the next time we were that low over here in July of 2020? Again, first, we simply just went sideways for a while around 9,500. And once we hit that low in the implied volatility, Bitcoin went up by 36%. So this time a break to the upside. In other words, when implied volatility is low, this very much correlates to not a lot of price action in the past, but it very often is the silence before the storm. But we can't really know into what direction that storm will bring us. It could be a 50% crash. It could be a 30% rally, but it seems to be a violent movement in either direction. Now let's continue and look at the next incidents. So implied volatility was relatively elevated and then it hit again a low in January of this year. And look at what Bitcoin did. It went up very, very quickly again by 35% roughly. And now we are approaching those lows yet again. I find this fascinating. The greatest moves tend to happen when nobody expects them. And we should be prepared that something like this could happen very soon again. Now, I don't care if it goes up very quickly or if it goes down very quickly. I'm actually happy in case it goes down because it gives us another buying opportunity. Some people say that Bitcoin's high volatility is a bug, that it's not an investable asset because sometimes Bitcoin can go down by 70 or 80 percent from the all time high. I think that's a feature. Bitcoin supply is not very liquid, so it doesn't take a lot of sales orders in order to depress the price massively. It might only be 10% of Bitcoin that actually move when the price goes down by 70 or 80%. So the vast majority of Bitcoin holders still continue to hold. They are not moving, but the price gets really, really depressed. Now that's good in a way because it shows that overall the network is stable, right? There's still enough people that hold it as a long-term investable asset. But at the same time, we've got the opportunities to buy low when those 10% are super fearful and they are dumping the whole market down. So it's all about having enough conviction in Bitcoin, knowing enough about Bitcoin that it will survive the next five or 10 years. If you believe that it will long term survive, that it will appreciate versus fiat in the long term because its inflation is lower than fiat, right? Fiat gets printed way faster than Bitcoin gets mined. If you believe that the appreciation long term is intact, then you can buy up those lows when those 10% of people might be selling. And that's an opportunity relatively unique to Bitcoin. Stocks, for example, are more liquid. They don't tend to crash that much. So if you really think about it, if you like an asset long term and you think it will increase over time in 
value, then you do want it to be as volatile as possible because only then you get the opportunities. Imagine Bitcoin wasn't volatile at all and it simply just appreciates very, very slowly. You could never heavily dollar cost average in for a heavy discount. So that's the fascinating thing about Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin's market cap can go up by one or two orders of magnitude, but the volatility is barely shrinking. So instead of a 100 million market cap, we've now a 10 billion market cap or a 100 billion market cap, and still the price can go down by 70 or 80 percent. The long term price rises create a lot of attention, brings new people into the space, and they get fear very quickly and they continue to create those massive massive buying opportunities now if you enjoyed this video feel free to subscribe because i publish videos regularly a like of course would be appreciated as well and in case you've got telegram then feel free to search for bitcoin strategy channel in the telegram app or click the link down below i hang around there regularly so very much looking forward to chatting with you bye bye